Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Return of the Nightmare. Motu vs. Jenkins 2, the rematch. Brought to you by Peach Boxing, Blackout Channel, and all aspects drainage. Now, tonight, we have a stack 17 fight card with 15 amateur fights and two professionals, with our headlining fight being the rematch between undefeated the Nightmare Motu, who be taking on Michaela the Hurricane Jenkins. Also featuring as our co-main event and first professional fight of the evening, Jesse the Maniac Mayo. He fights out of pitch boxing and he'll be taking on Ethan and Drought out of Red Line Combat Academy. Now calling the action tonight with you, we have myself, Chop Top Channel, and with me undefeated cruiserweight professional David, the Great White Light. 17-0 with 10 knockouts in the rank, number four by the WBO. Awesome to have you here with me tonight, Dave, and we have in the red corner Aaron Walsh fighting out of Peach Boxing. Now here she has her entrance music, Irish entrance, entrance music. Dave, shed a little bit of light on your trip on there, Aaron. Shed a bit of light on Aaron Walsh, Dave, Jim partner. Aaron, yes. Out of Waterford. <laughs> Out of Keep Waterford going. Island. She's a uh, she's the uh, New Zealand champ in the 57 kg division. And she is a strong puncher. She usually gets pretty square and tries to uh, hurt people with both hands. Which you don't really see out of a lot of female boxers, especially in that way. And she'll be taking on Kirsten Ripia out of David Tour Boxing in the blue corner. Okay, from, you know, from memory, from, from the fights of hers, I've called Bullish kind of fighter comes forward, throws hard punches, and, 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 and she has some power behind this job too. Also, I've called a couple of fights of hers. She has a similar kind of punch repertoire. She fires wide shots in volume, but the Yeah, and Aaron obviously does a lot of sparring with Mia and a lot of sparring with uh, Sunny Marini, who was just on before, so it's very good sparring for her. Um, it's obviously hard to get female sparring partners uh, in this country, in Auckland, or just in the women's division at their weight generally. So I don't know who, who Kirsten's been sparring, but. Here we go, opening round. As I was saying before, Aaron comes Ooh. in, claims the center of the ring, and Kirsten firing viciously to start the round. And they both like to trade. Wow. <laughs> action from the get go. And I'm confident this kind of action will continue. So it might be who, who has the conditioning? Great start from Kirsten. You know, how do you think Erin feels about that? You know, she comes out and typically she's the bully. But she walked into a few shots there from Kirsten. Takes another one, oh. lands a few of her own. Just battle of the right hands. Oh, double right hand over the top from Erin. I think Kirsten did her homework on Erin. Knew she was an aggressive fighter. She's definitely landed some shots. She wanted she's to set her own authority going into the fight. She's drawn some blood there from Aaron. Yeah. Now we know both fighters in the ring have power. Aaron's stalking Kirsten. This is an action packed first round. Now the crowd loves it. We'll see you got Kirsten they use a few jabs. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't seen too many of those in this round. And they go back to swapping shots inside. Nice right hand there from Kirsten. Oh. And she's landing some shots. Unleashing hooks. 
couple of right hands in this. Not too many straight punches this fight. Hmm. Aaron's happy to just wear some shots, trying to land her own. Not too bothered about defense. Oh, oh big right hand, hand over the top, top for Aaron. It's Looks like Kirsten's a bit wobbled. Oh, she is. Could have been from that right hand that Aaron landed over the top before. Or it could have been an ankle problem. Not sure. No, I think for Aaron, you know, being the type of fighter she is and some of her previous fights, it might be quite a surprise or a difference, you know, walking into range. Oh, oh and she lands a massive right hand over the top. That wobbled her very good. You can see Kirsten starting to look a bit withered. That was an unbelievable first round. <laughs> that's, the, that's the round of the night so it's far. round of the night. And Kirsten does look troubled. She looks like her legs are almost gone underneath her. And I mean, that, that was a pretty, a pretty like high paced first round. You know, maybe she's hurt or, or maybe she's just feeling the pace of the fight. <laughs> yeah. It's so <laughs> many shots. Much could be. And like every punch that well, she started so well. I mean, Aaron came at her like we expected. And she sat there on the ropes and landed a lot of good shots and drew blood out of Aaron's nose right at the beginning of the round. But Aaron seemed to get it back and land some really crisp overhand rights that seemed to rock Kirsten on the ropes and in the middle of the ring. And you can see the balance of Kirsten went after those shots. I kind of feel like as well, you know, in between the action, Aaron's just stalking her opponent in the middle of the ring, not really expelling a lot of energy, but yeah, Kirsten circling around on the outside, but but you know, really active on her feet, showing lots of feints, you know, lots of movement, and it could just be a bit of, you know, sort of, sort of wasted energy. Whereas in between the exchanges, Aaron can sort of relax a little bit, sort of, sort of mm. recharge your batteries, and then go back to work. But here we have it there, you've got Kirsten circling around, lots of movement, lots of movement. Mm. And she could be maybe sort of taking a few deep breaths. Before we get back to it, before they get back to it. But she's not really using her movement in a way to like get jabs off or anything like that. She just stands there and fights when Aaron gets close enough. Aaron there digging to the body. You know, and it is quite tiring when you've got a person that's sort of putting their weight on you, dropping their, you know, their head into your chest and just letting shots go. It's tiring. Mm. And even just psychologically, when you're on the ropes and you're having to do all of your fighting there, oh, it can be Aaron. very draining. This fight is unreal. <laughs> blow after blow after blow. This might be a fight that comes down to conditioning. Who's the more conditioned fighter? Mm. But Aaron just started to take control of this fight. Sort of in the last sort of 20, 30 seconds. Claiming the center, leaving on her opponent, unleashing hooks to the head and body. The body language of Kirsten started to show signs of, of fatigue. Yeah, well, Aaron look very much will be searching for an eight count, if not a stoppage. Kirsten started to stop with her offense. She's not, she focused a few shots there, but then sort of the last 15 seconds of, of action, she's kind of not been letting her hands go. Oh, takes a big right hand counter. Oh, big right hand from big Aaron. Big right hooks. And not an eight count in sight. And this is only round two. They've got another oh, three very minutes pretty. of work. Just signaled by the referee not to turn her back to her opponent. She's kind of done a 360 there. Well, this looks like a welcome break for Kirsten. <laughs> She's puffing hard in that neutral corner. Big deep breath. Oh, 
Aaron's just keen to get right back in there. Jogs up to opponent. Can't wait to get back to work. Mm -hmm. Can you believe we still got another round to go, Chopter? <laughs> Mental. Great effort by both these girls. Whatever happened. Now, I'd say that's a round apiece, yeah? I feel like that's a round apiece. Really? First round. Uh, see, I, I thought... I thought Aaron having Kirsten on the ropes in the first round and she landed some big right hands so with daylight punches. I thought Aaron could have still scraped that first round. I mean it was a round where I mean it was a round where I don't know, it would be, it would be hard to call. I kinda of felt like I did feel like Kirsten landed like the bigger shots and kinda of got Aaron to sort of pause for a minute and re and, and rethink a kind of strategy for a bit. Hey, you could be right, she was holding the seat, but she may have taken that first round too. But she definitely took that second round. David Tour electing to have his girl stand in the corner for the first half of that break. So he must think too that her legs are a little wobbly. A lot of support. It's going off in here. The crowd loves it. So another welcome break there for Kirsten. Headgear malfunction. Should be good for her. Should be, should be really taking some deep breaths. Not long before they're back to war. Well, there we go, Chop Chop. I just turned Aaron my volume Wilson. up and my headset. Now I can hear you <laughs> <laughs> For all you watching online, we've sorted out our technical difficulties. Which ones? My headset. <laughs> <laughs> and the volume switch. And Aaron jogs to the center of the ring. Keen to get back in there, back into the fire fight. Aaron gets very square when she gets on the attack. Almost puts her back foot up in front of her front foot. She, she spreads her stance wide and mm. just lets her shots go. Mm. Uses a wide base of support to really swing those hooks in. And it works for her. Massive right hand, legs went on that. That was a huge right hand, that was mm. the punch of the fight. Punch of the night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kirsten's done very well to stay on her feet after that shot. It whipped her whole body right around. And then Isaac Peach in the corner, urging Aaron, urging her on to get back in there. Press the action. Oh, oh another massive right hand. Oh. And another one, she's really found a home for that right hand. It's like three, three massive right hands. What does she have to do to get an eight count? I guess she's firing right back. Maybe she can get, if she can get two of those clean shots back to back, might prompt Ina to jump in and give us thing up.
Kirsten losing a lot of her shape, not much on her punches at all, but she's still trying. It's just pure heart. Pure heart. The 10 second clamor. Clapper, they fire hard to the finish. There Great fight. Holy wreck. The crowd on their feet. Damn. The That's tour man is elated. <laughs> <laughs> A very happy coach. Everyone should be proud of their boxers in that fight. The crowd definitely won that fight. The crowd won that. So how would you call that that last round, Dave? Ah, uh, I mean, to be Well, I might be biased. Yeah, but biased. Don't be biased, Dave. But I just felt throughout the whole fight, Aaron was landing. After the sort of the initial stages of the first round, Aaron was landing just big daylight white hands that were, you could see were really affecting Kirsten. And she takes it. And I think, yeah, you're right, you know, she... She looked the fresher of the two after sort of the, the opening two minutes. You know, perhaps just that, that holding the center, you know, not wasting energy between their exchanges. She was able to stay fresher and, you know, just start to find the mark with her punches, you know, as Kirsten was draining her batteries on the outside being forced to fight. Well, Kirsten was trying to fight Aaron's fight. And that was probably a good strategy against her, and it worked for that first round, but Aaron knows how to fight that fight, and she's going to have the stamina for that sort of strategy. But Kirsten gave it a hell of a chance, but... It's great to see good respect between the fighters. You know, it looked like you were sitting around sitting right, you were guest out with your heart was massive tonight, Kirsten. And when you're far behind you, mate, I just want to say I'm pleased with it. What would you like to say to Congratulations to both our fighters. Congratulations to Jerome. 
Congratulations, Steve. We've got a proposal here at Walsh. 